I'm Joshua Finn from j &H Aerospace. This is the build video for the j &H Aerospace One Sheet Wing. This is an airplane designed by Ross Clements uh, based off of the principles of our One Sheet Glider, which has proven very popular. This is a good little airplane for people to learn the principles of tailless airplanes, and by tailless I mean no horizontal tail. So this is not going to be capable of the same level of performance as, for example, the One Sheet Glider, but this will teach you the principles of operating flying wings, and kids absolutely love them. My son uh, particularly finds that this is easier to fly off of the catapult than the One Sheet Glider is because you can grab it up under here if you've got short little arms. It doesn't require as much catapult tension to launch it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the uh, build video for this and then we'll show you some basic instructions on trimming these and um, hopefully this will get you in the air. The inventory list on this airplane is very short just as uh, with the one sheet glider. This is intended to be a very very simple economy class airplane so it's inexpensive and easy to build. So you're going to have your uh, sheet of parts right here. You're going to have a catapult handle. Um, you're going to have some rubber strip and some clay for balance. Now, before we start building things, a few materials you need. CA and CA accelerator. Let me move the camera up here a little bit. CA and CA accelerator. Sanding block. And uh, you can get along without a razor blade or knife, but I recommend having one. So if you're working with young kids that they can't really handle these, uh, it, it is possible to build the airplane without it, but it's better if you have it. So the first thing we're going to do, and I should mention this was a B-grade kit that is just one that I couldn't ship out, so um, that's why all the parts are running off the side, because I don't throw anything away. And so you can pop your fuselage sides out like so. Uh, alternatively, I'll show you the other way, which is just to actually go in here and crack everything loose. The one thing you have to be particularly careful with that, though, is since the grain runs horizontally here, you can break these catapult hooks off if you do that. So that gets us part of our fuselage, and then we'll go ahead and we'll pop out the um, catapult hooks here, or the, the side plates, I should say. These reinforce the catapult hook and make it more durable, and since you need a fair amount of weight up front, they just help with all of that. If you hear any strange noise in the background, it's because there's a giant thunderstorm popping outside, and yeah, it's interesting. So with all of these parts out, now what we can do is uh, go ahead and we'll glue them up. Um, you can sand the parts now, but I recommend waiting and sanding them afterwards. Uh, reason being, that just means that you are able to sand everything at once instead of um, sanding each piece individually and then having to sand it all again afterwards. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put glue on all of this and we're just doubling it up. So we're creating uh, in effect, a fuselage from 1 8 inch balsa. And just make sure everything is lined up as good as you can get it. Then come in here on the nose. Try not to be as clumsy with the glue as I am. And so there is your completed fuselage. And if you've got time, go ahead and sand everything, make it look nice. Um, you can actually round off 
pretty much whatever you want to. However, I will mention a couple of things on that. Um, one is that along the length of this fuselage, any place that you round it off, you're weakening the fuselage without any significant actual gain in uh, flight performance. The other is that you don't want to sand this area, which is where you mount your wing, or this area as far as rounding it. Um, you can you know, whack off any burrs that are back here, level things up, what have you. But you do not want to round these areas because this is your wing mount and this is your vertical tail mount. So there's your completed fuselage. All good. Now we will move on to the uh, wing. So pop all of this out. There's some very specific instructions you're going to want to follow on the wing in order to get a really good quality product here. So flying wings are very, very critical in flight trim, because, uh, particularly catapult launched ones, because effectively this is your tail moment arm right here. On, an, on, on a normal glider, you're going to have a horizontal stab back here somewhere, so your tail moment arm is, you know, it's in, effectively could be an order of magnitude larger, or, or at least close to it. So what we're going to do, we'll go ahead and pop the dihedral gauge out while we're at it. So what we're going to do is we're going to sand this, um, this center section for our bevel, um, and that way we can set our dihedral. But before we do that, we're going to put in the elevons. Before we do that, I'm going to show you, you can, this, as you've seen on this one, and we'll get some video footage of this flying. Uh, I did not sand the wings at all on this. Um, these do fly better with the wings rounded off, and I'm not talking about in terms of the uh, glide ratio improving, but rather the flight dynamics. So the airplane launches better, and it's more stable. Um, kind of a little bit different of a, a relationship there. I don't really know the full reasoning for that. Um, I know some of it. But I'm not a, a uh, fluid mechanics uh, expert, so that that part of things I can only hint at the basic principles of what's going on. Um, and I think it's a it comes down to a flow stability thing. Uh, I have seen the phenomenon, but I, I don't really know all of the mechanisms that make it do what it does. So anyway. If you have a sanding block and you have time, if you round this off, it just makes the airplane fly better. I would also assume that, that that also means if you made this wing out of light 1 8 inch balsa and then just carved it to a symmetrical airfoil, um, you would be able to launch it substantially higher um, because of the improved airflow stability on it. So, with that, we've got our wing put together. I don't remember where I did the bevel. I didn't do the bevel all the way, so just come back and get it right. It does take very, very little dihedral to make this airplane behave. 
So we'll go ahead and do a check on that right here. And that shows that it's fitting correctly. Now one thing you will note when you're, this, this wood, usually we're using A grain or B grain wood. Um, and so that means that there will be some degree of warpage here. If you glue this together efficiently, you can mitigate that warping effect. Now at this point, I recommend if you've decided this is your bottom surface of your airfoil, run a razor blade over these perforations. Don't cut all the way through, just run a razor blade over it, and then you can crack it like that. Now what you're going to do is come in here and take this little dihedral gauge, not dihedral, um, elevon deflection gauge, and set it on there, and basically you really can just press the elevon back with that if you've bent it up. And now run some glue, top and bottom, and then or gauge back on here. Remember, this is going to tend to want to glue itself to the airplane, so uh, watch out for that. And now we've got our Elevon deflection set. And just for a little insurance, we can come down on the um, bottom surface, get the same thing. And there we go. Um, sand this off a little bit, just made nice and smooth and pretty and There we go. So we'll repeat that on the other side. So I so said this is the top because it's deflected up. We're going to come over here and we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to score this down on the bottom here. And here we go. My wife is in the background taking pictures of me building uh, or recording this video because Ross has had the patience of Job in waiting for us to get this build video done he designed the airplane uh, close to six months ago and we're just now getting it together. Right, so there we have um, the Elevons in place and now what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll glue our wing down. So what I'm going to do is hold down the wing here, set my dihedral, and if I can hold all of this, you know, with four hands or whatever, uh, and not drop my dihedral gauge either. Can you No, I've got it. It's fine. I'm only doing this because I'm being hyper OCD about the whole thing. If you can't tell, this is a family affair because we're all just sheltering in from the horrific weather outside. Alright, so that gives you your completed wing. And we can go ahead and glue that on top of the fuselage. Now, alignment of this wing is fairly important. You want to make sure, basically, that you align the leading edge of the wing and the trailing edge with that seam that is running down there. 
And so you've got two points of alignment right here and right here. You want to pay close attention. Now, getting the fuselage tilt um, is nice, it looks pretty and whatnot. It does not really have that big of an effect on flight trim. Uh, I do recommend for durability's sake, go ahead and kind of fill it in along here, especially if you've got young kids that are going to be flying this. Um, this helps keep everything together. this with some CA accelerator. What you doing? Now, with that done, we're now going to move on to our final step in the build here which is that we are going to cut the rudder loose, or it's not a rudder, it's a vertical tail. And once again, we'll round off the edges of it just to make it fly a little bit better. This is purely um, for controlling aerodynamic drag here because uh, you don't have those funny flight dynamics that kick in with the solid-edged uh, vertical tail. And so on this we're going to hit some glue on the bottom of it. And this part is very important. I actually recommend gluing the vertical stab on one side here so that you can make sure it is flush on the side of the fuselage. Like that. Um, maybe even go so far as to uh, pressing down on the table like that. But whatever you have to do to make sure it's aligned straight forward and back. And then having done that, um, as my son has broken his off a couple of times, fill it that in. And we'll again hit that with some accelerator. So the next thing we need to do is balance our airplane, and this is um, the this is the, the prototype I made for RN. Russ has made several of these. I found the best CG location is an inch and seven eighths uh, back from the very apex of the wing leading edge. Um, you may end up differently, but here's what I'm going to do: is measure back there. Set that. Now, one thing I did do is I reduced the uh, Elevon travel on this. I actually bent the little Elevon, the tips of them back down a little bit. And um, so that allowed me to move the CG further aft. So that means with, with the stock deflection, you'll probably want the CG a little further forward. What I'm going to do here, is I'm just going to dab some clay on the nose. Actually, I should check and see where we're balancing. And we're way too far back. And I've got the mark on the wrong side, too. That's kind of the aft limit for the CG right there. So we're, I'm using CA to secure this clay. One moment, Caleb. And... That's got the CG uh, very, very close right there. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and we'll make.
make some uh, test glides with this and just use that to kind of get you started and then uh, we'll kind of do a recap. Alright, so here I am with the glider and that was perfect from the start. In case that didn't show up all the way, get one more here. And I stalled it a little bit. But So last little item is to set up your catapult for this airplane. So we've got a catapult handle and we've got some rubber. I actually recommend uh, for this particular airplane, uh, this is just our standard catapult we always supply, which is designed to be doubled up like this. That's overkill for this particular airplane because um, it can't handle that kind of power. Not structurally, it's just it will loop endlessly if you try to power it on four strands of one eighth. So I don't have my scissors handy, so I'm doing completely redneck stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie a single loop here. And tie that off. Now, what we'll do is I'm just going to grab this guy and loop it around like so. And we'll stick it on here. And there you go. If you have any trouble with it trying to slip off where the rubber laps over, just put a dab of CA right there. And now it'll stay put for you. So, at that point, you can go outside and you can start launching this thing off. This has been the build video for the JNH Aerospace One Sheet Glider. Uh, last little bit I've mentioned is for finishing these. You can't, if you are, uh, have any concerns about humidity, give this a real thin coat of Minwax Helmsman Spar Varnish. It's a specific type of varnish that is really good for wood in exterior environments. Uh, doesn't warp the wood, dries fairly quickly, etc. Um, wipe it on with a paper towel, uh, wait 12 hours or so, come back and sand it with like 600 grit sandpaper to get a nice smooth finish. And then after that you have a, a fairly well sealed surface that then will take paint readily. Um, and if you notice, if you look closely, you can see the wood grain through the paint that I've put on this airplane. And it looks very good, but when you look up close, you see that it's just a very thin misting of paint. And that is how you do your finishing on this type of airplane. No heavy, shiny coats of paint, just enough to give it that flash of color. You can still see the wood through it. That's nice and lightweight, and it still gives you a good flyable airplane. I will mention with this airplane, after you paint it, you have to rebalance it and retrim it. So if you're going to put a finish on it, go ahead and do that before you start trimming the airplane. I'm Joshua Finn with JNH Aerospace. This has been the build video for the One Sheet Flying Wing by Ross Clements. Questions, comments, put them in the comments section below. There's a link in the description for how to purchase this airplane. And we'll see you later. Bye bye. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are JNH Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.